Okay. So, uh, if we look at the word Saskatoon, and we want to find the total number of permutations, what we understand here is that we have some repeated letters. So, obviously, the S is repeated twice, the A is repeated twice, and the O's are repeated twice. Okay? So, we have some repeated letters. And, and the formula says we have to take the total number, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 factorial, right? And we have to divide it by the number of repeated objects factorial as a product of all of them. So what I mean is there are two S's, so we put 2 factorial as a factor in the denominator, and there are two A's, so you just keep doing this, and there are two O's. Okay? And that's how you set that up. Now, if you want to put, plug that into your calculator, that, I don't mind. Um, this is going to be what? 2 times 2 times 2. This is going to be 8. Right? It's 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. That's 2 cubed. That's 8. So this is going to be 9 factorial over 8. So that means that we could do 9. I mean, you could do this on your calculator just straight out. But really, this is 9 times 7 factorial, right? Because we just kind of skipped that 8 out there. So however you want to look at that, um, you can find your answer. So um, on this calculator, it's a little bit tricky sometimes to find that factorial. But let's do uh, 9 times, and we'll do 7. Where is factorial? Down over here. 45,360. Did you guys get that for an answer? Yeah. OK. 45,360, OK. That's how many different permutations you could have, rearranging all the letters in the, in the uh, word Saskatoon. And because we have repeated letters, of course, when we switch these two S's around in any of the permutations, that's not a new permutation. That's why we have to divide those up. OK? OK, so in the second example, it says, how many ways can the letters of the word Canada be arranged if the first letter must be an N and the last letter must be a C? So, the way I would suggest you do this is a kind of a, um, a little bit of a mixture of fundamental counting principle and the permutation formula. So this, this is how I would suggest you do this. We have um, C-A-N-A-D-A. -A -A. Okay. Is that better? I'm having trouble with my freeze button there, sorry, lately. I might need new batteries. So here's Canada. Now, there has to be, there's restrictions here, so N has to be the first letter. How many N's do we have? Uh, just one. So we have one option here, right? And C has to be the last letter. So, so the N's gone now, and C is going to be gone. It has to go, there's only one C, so guess what? Fundamental counting principle says that there's only one option for the front, one option for the last, due to the restrictions that are in the question. Okay, make sense? Now we have to figure out this mess here. Okay. How many different ways can we arrange this? Well, let's take a look at what we have left. We have A, A, D, A. Everyone see that? So I could easily find out, now that we know about repeated objects, we could easily find out how many permutations we can have with this. And that's what I would suggest. Right here, okay, you don't have to fill out the numbers 4, 3, 2, 1. That's not going to get you the right answer here. What you want to do is take into account that we have repeated objects. So you're going to go, uh, Okay, the number of permutations here is going to be 4 factorial, right, because there's 4, divided by what? Repeated objects. What do I put at the bottom? Yeah, there's three A's, so that's 3 factorial. And that's just going to be 4, right? Because you have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. It's just 4. So this is actually just 4. So I have 1 times 4 different ways for the group in the middle times 1 or four different arrangements. That's it. So with those restrictions, you take those two letters out, and then you have all these repeats in the middle. There's only four different ways you can do it. And we could actually write those out. In the textbook, I think they do list those four different ways for you to see if you're interested. OK? So um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, that's any questions about that? That's, I think that's the simplest, most straightforward way. All right, in our third example here, it says this. Um, th this is the type of question where we're talking about routes to get from one place to another, like, say, on a map. So Julie's home is three blocks north and five blocks west of her school. So you see this grid here. These represent blocks, right? 
So the, the house is three blocks north of the school, and it's one, two, three, four, five blocks um, to the west of the school. How many routes can, can Julie take from home to school if she always travels either south or east? So the restrictions here are just this. Um, you don't have to write this down, but, but if she travels like this, the restrictions are saying she's not going to go back up, and she's not going to go back and repeat, because then it's, then it's endless, right? It's an infinite number of things you could do. If she's just wandering around, like just d wants to be late for school, right? <laughs> missing the test or something. I don't know. You know. Oh, oh, sorry. It took me, uh, <laughs> took me an hour to get to school. It's only a five-minute walk, but you know. Um, so the restrictions are saying she's not going to double back and all that sort of stuff. Okay, hey, don't get any ideas, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get lost. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry to distract you. Okay. So this is how we're going to do this. Pretty easy. Now, if you start running through the options, okay, she could go south, then she could go east, then she could go south and east and south, and then east, east, east. So that's one option. Now, you can count all of them, and it's going to take a long time, and it's not worth it. But what you know is that in any of these options, there's all, she always has to go three blocks south to get to school, right? So there are three blocks south. So there are three south uh, blocks. And there are one, two, three, four, five um, east blocks, OK? So no matter which permutation, which way she goes, if she goes one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, she's always going three south, always going five east. Okay, got that? So that's good. Um, that's good to know because these are like repeated objects here, right? Okay. So how many blocks does she have to travel in total? Well, she's got to go three south and five east. That is eight blocks in total. Okay, no matter which way you slice it. She's not doubling back or going, you know, going north or going back west at all. She's just going those two directions. So the repeats are this. We have three south, so we put a three factorial on the bottom, and five uh, repeats for the east. Right? So again, it, just before we do this, just so you understand, if she goes, let's say the black one here, right? So she goes east, east, east. So that would be like this. And then she goes south, south, south. And then she goes east, east. You see that? So that's one. That's one option. The blue one, right, was south, east, south, east, south, east, east, east. That is option number two. And so instead of doing this, which is going to take you all year to write down, maybe not, probably not, but what we could do is just do it this way, considering the repeats. And I, this is the best way to do this for sure. So what does this turn out to be? Well, again, you could just do this on your calculator. This is going to be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 5 factorial. So those 5 factorials are gone. 3 times 2 times 1 is actually 6. So there you go. You didn't have to touch your calculator. It's 72. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I think you could do that in your head. We're talking about talk, what, do you, what do you mean? Let's just back this up. Let's just back up this. Let's just rewind the tape here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Give yourself a little more credit, okay? Come on. Anyways, if 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 you if you jump on your calculator right away, I'm I'm not offended, okay? But <laughs> but three factorial is six. Hopefully you know that by now. So you see, you just cancel out, and it's easy. Oh, okay. All right. Any questions? These three examples, any questions? Can you girls do this? Yes? Potentially, most likely. What? Oh. Oh, burn. I was looking at the wrong question. Here. All right. I apologize. I apologize. I don't know where I got the nine from. That was eight times nine. Here I am bugging you guys about doing this in your head. This is easy. All right, I apologize. This is me apologizing. I think I'm going to cut that out of the video. So uh, still recording. I think I'm going to edit that. Can I edit that out? No. You have to show that you're true color. And the video, everyone makes a mistake. Everyone makes a mistake. Okay. If you want more, subscribers, it's going to be a little bit more quirky. Yeah.
If I want more subscribers, I have to be a little more quirkier. Yeah. That should be the title of this one. Even math teachers make mistakes. The world makes sense now. Okay, I think we're done.